Hey everybody, Saint Monkey Trucker here with another video. This one's going to be a little bit different. Um, I just want to start off by saying thank you to all those who have reached out to me. Um, if you've watched my last video, you guys know that I am home due to a death of my brother. Um, taking a week off and going to go to his funeral. Um, I've been asked to be a pallbearer and speak at his funeral, which I am honored to do. Also saddened. Um, I hate speak in front of large groups anyways that's why this is a great platform because i don't see any of you so it makes it easier um but i will be going back out i told my fleet manager that um i will be ready to go wednesday morning so whenever they can get my trainer back through town i'll be ready to go um the funeral is on tuesday so that'll put me out exactly one week anyways purpose of this video i want to do kind of a q a Go over some of the questions that I've been asked from my previous uh, videos about the orientation phase, the PSD phase, and kind of where I've been at on the TNT phase. Um, so I have my iPad here, so if you see me looking down, you know what I'm staring at, just so I can um, read what I'm going to be going through. Um, once I'm done answering all these questions... If the, you have any more questions, leave them in the comments. I'm always here and available to answer those questions for you. Um, these are in no particular order of when they were asked or importance. I'm literally just reading down my list off of the YouTube Studio app. So um, it's going to be good. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. so I was asked, what did I do for a living before I decided to become a truck driver? So I have done many, many things. I have been called a jack of all trades. Most recent job that I had before starting with Prime was I was a mechanic at a Ford dealership. I was their used car, um, reconditioner is kind of what the title was. Essentially when they would bring in a used car, whether it was from trade or they bought at auction, I would make sure that vehicle is prepped and ready to be sold on the lot. Um, next question. Do, 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 do. So I got asked a couple times, how thoroughly do they check your employment history? Um, there were some issues with the previous employer, and they didn't know kind of how that went. Um, main thing Prime cares about is when you worked for someone and where you worked. Uh, they don't generally call them unless they're really concerned about something um but if there is a problem with a previous employer when you're filling out your application um there's usually a little note section or you can even let your recruiter know like hey there was an issue with this employer um just kind of giving them a heads up do, 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 do. next question okay this one has been asked multiple times um in various ways so i'm going to ask answer it the best i can to kind of cover all of the questions and how they were phrased so it says that you need your cdl permit prior to applying for the training is that true yes and no um i was working with my recruiter and i turned in an application before i obtained my permit um, i submitted my application on a sunday night and I started working with the recruiter that Monday, that next day. Um, but for you to be considered for employment, yes, you do need your permit before um, you will actually be considered for the program. Um, so I was asked, how long did it take from the time I touched down in Salt Lake for orientation the time I started the PSD phase, um, I have covered this in another video, but I'll cover it here real quick. Um, from the time I got to the terminal to when I started the PSD phase was roughly four days. Um, orientation, you go in, they give you an introduction, you watch a whole bunch of safety videos and stuff on a computer, you fill out paperwork, and then you go through a process called clearing. Um, once you have cleared, you are done with the orientation phase. You are now ready and are able to move on to your PSD phase. Um, they kind of really blend together, the two, because it's like 
from one day to the next, you're in the next next part of it. Um, I'm from Salt Lake, so technically I didn't touch down, but that's just from when I got to the terminal to when I finished what they would consider the orientation phase. Um, someone asked me, I understand that you'll have your reasons for staying in the truck. But as a trainee join your reset, do you get to leave the truck for those hours? So they are referring to a video when I was talking about a 34-hour reset that I spent in California at my trainer's house. Um, during those 34 hours, you are considered off-duty. Um, you're not obligated to drive. Obviously, if you are doing a rolling 34 and the vehicle is moving and your partner, trainer, or whoever else is in the vehicle with you is driving, obviously you can't leave. In my case, because the truck was parked, yes, I could go and do whatever I wanted. I could go shopping. I could go to the beach. I could do anything that I want to because that was my time off. Um, but due to financial circumstances and where I was, I just stayed at his house and slept in the truck at night while he stayed with his family in his um, but they made sure I was well taken care of, that I was fed, that I had shower, bathroom, all that good stuff. But yes, you can leave the truck, join your 34, and do what you want. That is your time off. They can't dictate what you do, unless the truck is moving because you have a co-pilot. Um, I was asked, how hard was it to get the 10,000 miles in in two weeks? It was brutal. Um, our truck did not stop. It was, you drive 11 hours and you switch, they drive 11 hours, and it was just continuous. Um, I've been on, almost all my runs have been on 2,000 miles each, and the deadlines for drop-off were always really narrow, so um, we could not stop the truck. Um, it was just go, 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 go. Um, I've been in communication with people from my class. Um, the majority of them got nowhere near those miles in their two weeks. So, um, what I did is when I first started with my trainer, he introduced, he picked me up from the Salt Lake terminal where my fleet manager is based. And when I went and talked to him, I told the fleet manager, I'm like, I want to get done fast, run as hard. And he just smiled and said, if you say so. So he's kept his word. He's pushed as hard. Um, okay. So how long does it take? From your time of application to the start of your orientation training. Um, I was a non-typical application. I pushed to get my application through as fast as possible. My uh, recruiter worked really, really well with me. Um, and she helped me get that thing done as fast as possible. Generally, there is a lot to get done. Um, prior to starting orientation. Um, so I was, I was not common. And also they usually don't have openings that soon. So you're usually on a waiting list, for example. So I, I applied on Sunday and I could have started that Friday, but because it was my daughter's birthday and I promised her I would not miss it, I opted to start that following Monday. So I was a one week process and in. Um and like that was nonstop throughout the whole week working on getting my DOT physical, getting my drug test, getting um all the application stuff taken care of, um, getting all the paperwork done, getting my permit. Um so you can get in quickly if they have openings and you have everything lined up. If not, um uh, my nephew just went through the whole process he just started his tnt phase i think he waited two weeks before his and i've heard of people taking a lot longer than that as well um so this question gets asked a lot because i have mentioned that i'm considering going lease and stuff like that but there's various questions asking about income i can't get into a whole lot of details because i don't know what my final income and stuff's going to be, but a lot of it is going to have to do with how many miles you run. If you are a company driver, you are paid per mile. It's cents per mile. I'm flatbed division, and they are currently at 50 cents per mile. 
so just to kind of give you an idea um and you can just look at it prime trucks they're governed to 62 on cruise control unless you are leased they're 65 and you can drive for 11 hours so you can kind of do the math and max it out 11 hours 62 miles an hour you're getting about 620 miles roughly and then you do the math based off of that um I'll kind of do it for you right now. So you're driving 62 miles an hour for 11 hours. The most you can get 682 miles. I was way off. Wow. I don't know where I got 620 from. That's based off 10 hours. Mm -hmm. um, but also keep in mind, you're not going to be doing 11 hours every single day. You're going to be waiting at loaders, at receivers, shippers. There's a lot of wait time. So we're just going absolute max, right? So 11 hours, oh, my calculator just took a dump, let's see, so 682 miles a day, 62 miles an hour, non-stop, no breaks, nothing like that, just straight through. You do that for your 50 cents, so you could potentially be making $341 before taxes per day, but like I said, that is maxing it out. Um, the majority of people aren't doing that every day, and there are a lot of things that are going to affect that pay. Waiting, traffic, truck goes down, um, anything like that. So, and that's another reason why I've considered going lease or owner-op, is owner-ops make 72% of the revenue off the load. Um, the only time that's different is tanker is currently at 71 percent um so reefer flatbed 72 tanker 71 um and then what you gross your 72 percent you have to pay your truck payment you have to pay for maintenance you have to pay for your fuel um most of the drivers i'm talking to roughly take home after everything's said and done paid for half of what they gross so you can look at it for every $1,000 you gross, you're netting roughly $500. Um, that is different for a lot of people. That is just kind of the average I have found. So prime example, um, I just went on a load. My revenue would have been 2048 That would have been my cut, my 72% of the pay. So... You could have guesstimated I would have roughly taken home $1,000 off that one load. So, I know it's a rough guesstimate. And when I get in a truck, if I do end up going lease or owner-op, I will do kind of a breakdown. Or if I decide to go company, I'll keep you updated on what I make in during that time. Um, this one was asked a few times during the drug test. Is it a urine test or a hair follicle? Um, primary now is currently doing urine tests. Um, they do have the option for hair follicle, but they rarely do it. Um, just because the hair follicle goes, the history on that goes back. I, whereas the urine test shows more of the reason stuff. And I think they realized that if they did the hair follicle, they were losing people that used to use, but no longer do. And they were losing potential drivers that could make them profit. So currently urine tests. Um, do, 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 well, while I come across this one, I want to shout out to John Mon 82 He used my driver's code, and I want to thank you for that. That is awesome that I am seeing that little bit of progress. Good luck to you. Keep me updated in the comments how you're doing. And for those who don't know what my driver code is, um, it'll be in the description. It's H-A-U-Z-R-K. Use that during your application process, and they throw me, they kind of toss me a little bit of a bone for referring people to the Prime program. So for John Mon82 and anyone else that's used my driver's code, thank you. Um, do, 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 do. When you're in your PSD phase, are you in a group learning or are you one-on-one -on -one with a trainer? I'm interested in Prime, but I'm wondering if you get the one-on-one -on -one with the trainer instead of the group. Yes and no. Um, you get both. 
So a lot of the general teaching um, explaining the concept is in a group situation. So when you get out on the pad, they will say, okay, this is what we expect you to do. This is the goal. This is how you get there. But the person who is sitting in the driver's seat of the truck gets all the attention from the trainer. Unless there's a safety hazard or something going on that they got to take care of. But they will make sure you are doing it right. And if you're messing up or not getting it, they will instruct you one-on-one -on, -one on how to correct the situation. The pad people... The pad trainers are amazing people. Um, I've heard nothing but good stories about them across all the terminals. And then if you do a PSD over the road training, obviously that is one-on-one. -on -one. You go out in a truck with a um, trainer and you spend a few days to a couple weeks with them learning the maneuvers and stuff like that. And then they bring you back to a terminal and test and you test in their truck. You don't test in prime trucks. You test in whatever truck you have been driving. Um, ow, sorry, my legs kind of hurt. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, so during TNT phase, you are guaranteed 900 a week. Someone asked, is that before or after taxes? 900 a week is before taxes are taken out. Um, with my current setup, my deductions, I'm taking about 740 a week. Um... And that's while you on the tr you are on the truck. If you request to get off the truck for any reason, like I have, you do not get paid for those days. They um... oh, I can't even think of the word. They just essentially subtract the days you aren't on there and deduct that much off your check. My last check, I missed a week or I missed a day last week, so my check was only seven or six something. So. And then this week I've missed the whole pay period, so I'm not getting a paycheck next week. Um, I was asked if I'm going lease or employee driver, driver, company driver. I am undecided. I am leaning towards the lease side just because the potential to make more money is there. Yes, there is a higher risk, but sometimes you got to take the higher risks for the higher reward. Um, but there's nothing wrong with being a company driver or a lease driver. Everyone's different. They all have their different situations and what they want to get out of the company. Um, my biggest goal is to make as much money as I possibly can. And that is why I'm leaning towards the lease option. But, um, I know a lot of people who they will be company driver for six months to a year, kind of get some miles under their belt and just work out all the kinks of being a new driver on your own and at the expense of the company because if your truck breaks and it's a company truck they pay for it if it's a lease truck or an owner op truck and it breaks it's a, it's your dime it's your dime your time um so that was kind of all the serious questions i've been asked i've received some fun ones that i'm just gonna answer because i can um you got ripped off on your DOT physical. I paid $100 with the drug test. That's about average. Um, the problem and the reason I paid more for my physical is because Monday I went in to take my um, CDL permit exam. And I was unaware that you needed your physical before they would even accept you to take the test for the permit. And I went in for that exam at 4.30 in the afternoon on a Monday night. I had to get I had to get that permit. That permit was what was stopping me from getting my application accepted. Um, so I called every doctor's office within 60 miles of my location. I found one location that was open and that could get me in and taken care of. So... I went in, I paid what they asked for just so I can get it done with. Um, if you wait for Prime to do it, they will actually pay for the DOT physical and the drug test. Um, but because I was impatient and I knew I had to get in as fast as possible, I just went and did it on my own, which is perfectly fine. But if you have the time and you're able to wait, let Prime pay for it all. Why, why pay for something that you can get for free? Um, I did do their drug program drug test program so 
drug test wasn't any cost to me. Um, but there are the doctor's offices, they kind of set their prices. So you're at their mercy. Um, do, 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 do. This one was kind of fun. Um, I had fun with it. So why does everybody post videos on Prime Training? There are tons of these videos. My response was, if you look at my history of videos, they are all about what I am currently doing in life. Right now, that is Prime. Plus, one gets bored easily, so I make videos. Just as you are bored enough to comment on them, have a wonderful day. They responded back with touche. You know, sometimes you just gotta smile and just have fun with life. Um... Another comment I got, this is just a comment on one of my videos because I picked up a roll of aluminum going to Pepsi that was labeled beer. And their suggestion was the roll labeled beer might be for Pepsi Nitro. Pepsi Nitro uses nitrogen instead of CO2, so it might have needed a stronger aluminum alloy. That is definitely a good possibility. Um, I still don't know what the answer is. Another person suggested that um, it's for the new Mountain Dew Hard I guess Mountain Dew makes an alcohol now, which is obviously Mountain Dew's Pepsi. Um, and then I've just had a lot of people that have just been very kind to me and just tell me good luck, giving me pointers of advice, go slow, swing wide, and don't run into shit. Some of the greatest advice you'll ever receive while driving a truck. Um, I mentioned Crocs in one of my videos. It says, great video, bro. I drive for Prime as well. And believe me, Crocs are a great investment. That's definitely what I wear, I wear while I am driving, and it's the best thing ever, I swear. Um, still haven't bought me any Crocs yet. I just have not had any time. Um, I comment, I was very nervous on my PSD exam. I did end up with a trifecta, and now I only have about 9,000 miles left on my TNT. Keep it going. Hope to see you out there. Same to you, man. Um, I mean, that was a month ago. You should be done. You should almost be... Uh, ready f to get your own truck you're probably waiting on a truck right now so hopefully see you around thanks for the comment um. <laughs> i talk a lot about food i got a comment i like food too hopefully here sometime soon i will be joining within the next seven months that was a month ago i hope to see you out there um i love meeting people out on the road that kind of know who I am and then lots of people just new subscriber new subscriber new subscriber it's like I mean you guys are awesome and like I, I really appreciate you you guys are giving me something to do with my days with my life um so just really appreciate it I know this is a little bit longer of a video and it's not my typical videos um, once I get back out onto the truck and start getting my miles done you'll get another update me update from me um next week you won't be getting anything this week and that's the reason i did it today because the next few days are all funeral based and i'm going to be preoccupied with all of that um to all the new subscribers welcome thank you i really appreciate you appreciate you guys you're up to 67 subscribers that is awesome and my views i'm at a thousand four hundred views that's that's awesome like I, I never expected my channel to even get over like 10 so the fact i'm up to 67 is awesome um as mentioned my driver code is going to be in the description of the video it's h-a-u-z-r-k if you're thinking of applying to prime and you're working with a recruiter give them that code like i mentioned they're going to toss me a little bit of a bone for sending a referral over to them if you have any more questions comments just want to say hi or whatever fill out the comment section let's get some things for me to read for me to respond to maybe i'll have enough questions here soon to do another one of these videos if you haven't already subscribe hit that bell so you get notifications when i post more videos and until the next one guys stay safe out there and keep on trucking